Hello friends welcome to the AK West Rounder, where celluloid dreams unfold and tales of cinematic wonder come to life. From the grandeur of epics to the intimacy of indies, we embark on a journey through the reels of time, exploring the vast landscapes of film. Join us as we delve into the heart of storytelling, dissecting the magic woven by directors, actors, and the boundless imagination of the human spirit. Here, opinions are as diverse as the characters on screen, and every critique is a window into the soul of cinema. Prepare yourself for an adventure beyond the screen. Welcome to a K West Rounder, where every frame is a canvas and every review a journey. Let's dive into the world of movie review. The Truman Show 2 is an upcoming American psychological comedy drama film, will be written and co-produced by Andrew Nicole and will be directed by Peter Weir. With the popularity of Jim Carrey's original movie, fans have been waiting for any The Truman Show 2 updates for a number of years. 1998's The Truman Show starred Carrey as the mild-mannered Truman Burbank and unassuming average Joe living in a seemingly idyllic town and leading a normal life. However, unbeknownst to Truman, his entire life has been a reality TV show. Every moment, from his birth to his first kiss to his serene life at the start of the movie, is staged. The Truman Show's unique premise years before reality TV shows like Big Brother made for a funny, compelling, and thought-provoking movie that won Carrie a Golden Globe and was nominated for three Oscars. By modern standards, The Truman Show 2 would seem like a sure thing, but, of course, there's no Truman Show 2. Given The Truman Show's success, the fact there's never been a The Truman Show 2 release date put forward by a studio, even for a since-axed project is perplexing. It's been 25 years since the original, but speculation around The Truman Show 2 has been ongoing especially in the age of social media when its themes of invasion of privacy and where the line is for entertainment make The Truman Show 2 possibly more poignant than ever. Plus, with movies like Top Gun, Maverick proving it is never too late to return to a franchise, the time could be right for The Truman Show 2 to pick up after The Truman Show's ending. There have been almost three decades of rumors and misinformation when it comes to The Truman Show 2, so pinning down how close it's come to actually happening can be tricky. After no real The Truman Show 2 knew to speak of for years, a potential idea for how to carry on the story of a The Truman Show sequel was put forward in June 2023. The Truman Show writer Andrew Nicole pitched an idea for a series taking place after the Jim Carrey movie. The series would, in lieu of a feature-length The Truman Show 2, focus on the in-universe spin-offs that happened in the wake of Truman exiting his own show, focusing now on different characters who are also unknowing and unwilling reality TV stars. Nicole explained, there would be a network with multiple channels, all starring a subject born on the show. If I set it in New York City, there would be girl living on the Upper East Side, a boy from Harlem. Nicole continued to describe how these competing shows would soon begin to overlap with the unwilling stars suddenly forming a connection with each other. In a clever way, Nicole acknowledged how two people in this situation would be drawn to each other as both sense that the other is acting differently from anyone they've ever met, because for the first time, they've met someone who is not acting. It would be an interesting way of continuing the story instead of making The Truman Show 2, one that maintains the unique premise without simply remaking The Truman Show. There has been no confirmation on The Truman Show 2 ever happening as either a sequel, reboot, or TV series. Despite the success of the original movie and some ideas being thrown around over the years, no follow-up has ever been greenlit, and there's currently no The Truman Show 2 release date on the horizon. There have been multiple rumors since the release of The Truman Show that Jim Carrey is making The Truman Show 2, but these have all been false although their frequency and the fact they still emerge decades later proves just how high demand actually is for a The Truman Show sequel. While it seems like the Truman Show 2 cast would obviously include Jim Carrey, that seems unlikely now even if the sequel did get off the ground. Carrey has been somewhat reluctant to make sequels in the past with Ace Ventura, Dumb and Dumber, and Sonic the Hedgehog are the only franchises he's returned to. While there was a time when the actor might have been persuaded to play Truman Burbank again, 
It seems unlikely now given Carey announcing his retirement. If Carey were to turn down the sequel, it seems unlikely the filmmakers would try to recast him, and would instead take the story in a new direction. If that is the case, there are few returning cast members from the original that would make sense for the cast of The Truman Show 2. However, it is possible Ed Harris could return as Kristoff, the creator of the show. A sequel to The Truman Show could find him attempting to recreate his hit show following its collapse in the original movie, for example, or be facing legal repercussions and social backlash decades later for creating the show in the first place. There are a number of interesting directions The Truman Show story could take if there is indeed a continuation. The Truman Show ending finds Truman finally leaving the world he has known and venturing out into the real world, effectively ending the show. Having the sequel come more than 25 years later means that fans will miss out on the most interesting aspect of Truman's story, which is seeing how he deals with starting his life from scratch. By the time the sequel starts, he would have built a new life on the outside. Carrie had an idea for The Truman Show too, which would have been a surprisingly bleak way to continue the story. Carrie suggests that the way people consume media would have made for a lonely new reality for Truman, suggesting he was alone out there, too, because everybody went back inside. They all wanted to be in the dome. He also pointed to the modern era of YouTube channels and TikTok accounts meaning so many people have their own small Truman shows making a follow-up an interesting area to explore. Nicole's idea for a television series about the star-crossed lovers on competing shows is another solid idea for the follow-up. The premise fits into the timeline of the original movie while also having the benefit of not needing to include Carrie if he is not interested in returning. With these ideas discussed before, there is still hope for The Truman Show 2 happening. Plenty of successful Jim Carrey films have gone without sequels, but of all the probably bad movies audiences were spared, The Truman Show 2 is the one we're glad never said good morning, good afternoon, good evening or good night. Beloved for his comic brilliance Bruce Almighty, Liar Liar, Dramatic News Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, and a more recent slapstick portrayal of Dr. K Robotnik in Sonic the Hedgehog. Jim Carrey is an actor beloved by many. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 apparently marks his final big screen role, although whether that's a Hollywood retirement remains to be seen. Over the years, Jim Carrey has developed something of a sequel-averse reputation. Aside from his second round against the Blue Hedgehog, Carrey has only ever made two follow-ups, Ace Ventura, when nature calls and dumb and dumber too. Given Hollywood's propensity for revisiting successful releases, that's an incredibly low ratio especially for an actor with 40 years on the clock. Explaining this unusual trend in 2022, Carey told Comic Book, Sequels have a diminishing return. If you do it long enough after the fact, you're kind of imitating yourself now. You're not using your original inspiration. Carrie's philosophy leaves a host of standalone movies that might have received sequels had they starred a less discerning actor The Cable Guy, Liar Liar, and The Truman Show. Some will inevitably feel disappointment at never catching up with an older Chip Douglas. Others will be relieved to avoid another Dumb and Dumber 2. But the prospective Jim Carrey sequel that really brings bile into the mouth is The Truman Show 2. Any attempt at a sequel to 1998's satirical classic would be anathema to the original movie's overarching message. Quite apart from commercial capitalism and human voyeurism, The Truman Show satirizes Western society's relentless drive to consume media, a message that looks eerily prophetic in an age of smartphones and streaming services. By its very nature, The Truman Show 2 would represent exactly what Andrew Nicole's script was taking shots at. Truman Burbank's story ends so beautifully. The only reason to revisit him would be exploiting the Truman Show's immense popularity. And while that's certainly the Hollywood norm, it runs counter to this specific film's commentary. You could absolutely imagine Ed Harris Kristoff developing a Truman cinematic universe. Whomever would accept the challenge of writing a follow-up to the Truman show must also face a no-win scripting scenario. If the sequel revealed Truman Burbank lived happily upon exiting his secret TV show, audiences would question the necessity of a second movie at all. 
If the sequel revealed Truman Burbank's life was a miserable disaster after walking through that door and Carrie's character wound up 60 years old begging for a return to Sea Haven Island audiences would question the point of the first movie. The brilliance behind the Truman Show's ending is how viewers don't get to know what happens next. Truman's life becomes private once he ceases to be a TV attraction. And that transition is reflected in how and more importantly when the story ends. Even if fantasy sequels like Liar Liar 2, Pants on Fire and The Wi-Fi Guy turned out as terrible as those titles, they wouldn't damage the integrity of their predecessors. A loose-lipped Jim Carrey telling brutal truths and dancing around a courtroom for an hour and a half might yield diminishing returns, but it doesn't tarnish anyone's enjoyment of Liar Liar. The Truman Show 2 is a rare exception where revisiting that same character in that same fictional world actually undermines the impact and power behind the first movie, weakening Truman's arc of awakening and falling victim to the very commercial pitfalls his character stands against. Jim Carrey's retirement means movie audiences will never again see that famous rubber face portray another fictional character. However, it also means that in a world where anything and everything can be revived on your streaming service of choice, The Truman Show is safe from the sequel treatment. Assuming we don't get The Evan Show with Steve Carroll, Jim Carrey's acting career has been built on a foundation of zany characters and offbeat comedy, but two of his movies on Rotten Tomatoes have been scored in such a way that they force his acting abilities to be seen in a new light. Although some of Jim Carrey's best movies show the fun-loving side of the actor, there's a subset of his back catalog that has him appear in more dramatic roles. Some of these alternative projects have been fairly hit and miss, but others have resulted in some of the best performances of Carrey's career. Almost every Jim Carrey movie reveals a new facet of the actor's skills, with each production requiring something different from its leading man. Throughout his career, Carey has always answered the call with his vast array of performances even if the movies themselves fell short in other areas. Interestingly, it was some of Carey's less slapstick and over-the-top characters that stuck more solidly in the minds of the audience, and Rotten Tomatoes has the evidence to back it up. Some of Jim Carey's most famous roles are loud and intensely charismatic. For instance, it's impossible to watch Ace Ventura or The Mask without being glued to their respective title characters because of their flamboyant nature. Due to this, Carrie became associated with a particular type of movie character. However, Rotten Tomatoes has 1998's The Truman Show and 2004's Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind as Carrie's highest rated movies. What's most interesting about this is the fact that the films weren't Carrie's usual work and featured him in more serious roles. Despite returning to his more familiar acting style before and after these two movies, the impressive Rotten Tomatoes scores for both films suggest that Carey's ability to carry a dramatic story is perhaps even greater than his skills in the comedy arena. Carey's next highest scoring movie on the site is 1997's Liar Liar, which was a return to the well-known type for the actor but is actually rated notably lower than both The Truman Show and Eternal Sunshine. So, Carey's reputation marks him as a comic actor, but it's his serious acting that has earned him the most critical acclaim. The fact that Jim Carey's two highest-rated movies on Rotten Tomatoes both feature him in dramatic roles proves that his comedic acting was just one of his talents. It's understandable that his more animated characters would grab the attention of those who didn't closely follow his career. But it's now also clear that Carey can deliver a more nuanced performance as well. There is no denying that Jim Carey is capable of delivering a side-splitting performance, but he was arguably a victim of his own success by pulling it off too well. As a result of his comedic triumphs, Carey was pigeonholed early on in his career into a genre of cinema that championed laughs above all else. While he still played roles that went against his recognized type through the years, the projects largely flew under the radar. Certain outlets have even praised Carey's performance in dramatic productions while criticizing almost every other aspect. For instance, Rotten Tomatoes isolated Carey's committed performance in 2016's Dark Crimes while scoring the movie 0% overall. 
Most of Carrie's recent movies have had him return to his comic roots, with any outliers to this trend not being met with much interest. His successes in The Truman Show and Eternal Sunshine show that Carey had much to offer in the dramatic arena, and he was rarely given the opportunity to flex that creative muscle in any meaningful way. As a result, many moviegoers have been denied the opportunity to see Carey deliver a touching performance such as he did in other films. Although many of Jim Carey's purely dramatic endeavors failed, he appeared in a number of movies that forced him to combine his manically funny sensibility with other forms of acting. For example, 2003's Bruce Almighty and 2008's Yes Man both had prominent moments that called upon their lead actor to tap into his emotional side, and the same is also true of Liar Liar. However, Jim Carrey should have been afforded more opportunities to star in dramatic movies alongside his comedy ones. The best The Truman Show quotes highlight the movie's clever, funny, and thought-provoking central concept. Jim Carrey stars as Truman Burbank, a man living a seemingly perfect life in an idyllic town. What Truman doesn't know is he's the star of a hit reality show also called The Truman Show and his whole life has been manufactured for public entertainment. Though a comedy, the brilliant concept opens the doors for deep moments as Truman fights for control of his own life. This leads to plenty of hilarious, touching, and profound quotes that help make The Truman Show such an unforgettable movie experience. The Truman Show is widely considered one of Jim Carrey's best movies to date. With its ingenious premise and Carrey's wonderful performance, it is an unforgettable ride that brilliantly mixes comedy and drama. With such a fun balance of tones, there are so many fantastic quotes in the movie to look back on. From the lines that make audiences laugh out loud to the ones that bring a tear to their eye to those that make them think, the best The Truman Show quotes show why it's considered a highlight of Jim Carrey's career. Kristoff serves as a perfect antagonist as he's a fascinating and complex character and the source of some of the best The Truman Show quotes that don't come from Jim Carrey. The success of the in-universe Truman Show has obviously gone to Kristoff's head, and he projects himself as a self-styled genius. However, there is one Ed Harris Truman Show quote that gives insight into how much license he believes his genius gives him to bend ethics. During an interview, Kristoff discusses the new storyline which will bring back Truman's father who Truman believes died when he was a child. When asked how they'll explain the absence, Kristoff simply says amnesia. The joke that he would use such a cliché gimmick shows that Kristoff is not the genius writer he pretends to be, but the quote is also a chilling reminder of how much Kristoff is willing to mess with Truman's head. Truman lives in the fake town of Seahaven, constructed entirely for the in-universe Truman show and populated by actors playing Truman's friends, neighbors, and family. One of the best Truman Show quotes is when one of Kristoff's production assistants explains why this means the sea is the key to Truman's escape because none of them can follow him onto the water. Truman eventually escapes the camera and heads out on the water, leaving the town of actors to try to intervene and do something about it. However, the problem comes when they realize the entire population of Seahave are actors and literally none of them can actually have the skills needed for their fake jobs. While trying to get the town ferry out on the water, the captain explains that he usually plays the bus driver and doesn't really know how to operate the ferry. As much as The Truman Show is a light-hearted and touching comedy, the concept does make it feel like a surreal adventure at times. The idea of the movie is so wild, but it succeeds because it makes the audience feel like it's not that far-fetched of an idea. This is helped by the many Truman Show quotes that explain how Truman has lived his entire life without realizing he lives in a TV show. During an interview about the show, Kristoff is asked how Truman has not questioned his reality, and he gives a very simple and true answer. It is a quote like that that makes the audience begin to question which parts of their reality do they take a face value. The Truman Show is one of the most highly regarded psychological drama films ever released, and its success is mainly due to the performance of its lead actor, Jim Carrey, who took on the titular role for one important reason. Directed by Peter Weir, The Truman Show sees Carrey as Truman Burbank, 
a kind-hearted insurance sales agent who lives on picturesque Sea Haven Island with his wife. While everything seems picture perfect, what Truman doesn't know is that his entire life is actually a reality TV show fabricated for the entire world to watch. That is until one day when he discovers that his life isn't what it seems. The movie was ahead of its time, as it was released in the early years of reality TV and anticipated the growth of the genre, but it was also a huge success at the time. The Truman Show opened in 1998 to critical acclaim and was later up for three Academy Awards. While he was not recognized with an Oscar nomination himself, Carey received plenty of other accolades for his performance in the comedic drama, including a Golden Globe win for Best Actor in a Motion Picture Drama. Carey's career certainly benefited from starring in The Truman Show, and he had a specific reason for accepting the rule. By the late 1990s, Jim Carrey had established himself as a slapstick comedic actor, best known for his roles in Ace Ventura Pet Detective and Dumb and Dumber. He received praise and recognition for his work in movies, such as The Mask, Batman Forever, and Liar Liar, but he was becoming unsure about his future in the movie industry and was worried about being typecast as a comedian, potentially hurting his career. Few comedic actors had been able to successfully transition to drama because audiences expected them to give humorous performances. When director Peter Weir offered Carrie the lead role in The Truman Show, the actor immediately accepted, seeing it as an opportunity to prove his skills in more dramatic roles. He even agreed to do the film for a reduced fee of $12 million as opposed to his usual salary of $20 million. The Truman Show was the fastest Carey accepted a role throughout his career, as he saw the movie as an opportunity to expand his talent, prove he was capable of doing drama, and escape being typecast in future films. The Truman Show proved to be a turning point in Jim Carey's film career. Critics praised his performance for breaking away from his broader comedy work. The film established him as a serious actor and proved he was capable of balancing comedic and dramatic performances. It also allowed Carey to pursue roles in such movies as Man on the Moon and Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, both of which again resulted in recognition for his dramatic performances. While he still continues to shine in comedy roles, The Truman Show gave Carey the chance to show audiences he could do more than just make them laugh. As one viewer nonchalantly asks, what else is on? The final line of the Truman Show highlights a key message in the movie. The 1998 drama stars Jim Carrey as Truman Burbank, a man who's born and raised in the fictional harbor town of Sea Haven, entirely oblivious to the fact that his life is being broadcast as a television show around the world 247. When strange things, like a light falling from the sky, or an irate former cast member hijacking the set force him to question the nature of his reality, he begins a desperate quest for answers and by the end of the Truman Show, freedom. Ed Harris plays Kristoff, the creator of The Truman Show, who guilt trips Truman into remaining in the only world he's ever known, but Truman refuses to be part of the simulation. After nearly dying when Kristoff uses the weather program to generate a storm strong enough to capsize his boat, Truman makes it to the periphery of the set, and with a bow, walks through the exit and into the real world. Viewers, who had previously been glued to their TV sets to see if Truman would make it now abruptly move on from something they've watched for 30 years, highlighting the flippant nature of the public consumer. Despite the fact that viewers had laughed, cried, and related to Truman for decades, they clearly had short attention spans when it came to finding something else to watch. The moment that Truman no longer provided them with entertainment, they were willing to move on to the next stimulating show. After years of prioritizing being voyeurs to Truman's life, rather than valuing the genuine human experiences that were all Truman ever wanted to attain for himself. The final line of the Truman Show epitomizes how fickle consumers can be, especially if something is no longer novel. Even if nothing exists exactly like the Truman Show, reality TV, and live streaming platforms have been changing broadcasting for the last several decades. Today these types of programming explore similar concepts, 
often drastically blurring the lines between a person's public and private life. With so much content available 247, there's a lot of competition for viewers' attention. And it's exactly the sort of circumstances that would give rise to an idea like The Truman Show in real life. While there were some viewers who protested the treatment of Truman, most viewers had spent a large portion of their lives connecting to Truman as he shared his first kiss, got his first job, and a series of other milestones. But the final line in The Truman Show proves they didn't really care about him. To them, Truman wasn't really a person but a commodity, so it didn't matter to them if he ever found out that he was the main character in a television show. As long as he was keeping them company and making them forget about their own problems, anything that was happening to Truman was acceptable. The true meaning of the Truman Show successfully showcases what happens when reality is manipulated for the sake of content. It raises questions about privacy as well as the ethics of entertainment and the lengths that are gone to in order to maintain primetime programming. Christoph tried to make it sound like Truman was a part of something altruistic and artistic that provided value to millions. But Truman was exploited for the sake of one man's godlike vision and never afforded the agency to choose how he was a part of it. Given how flippantly everyone is to change the channel after just seeing and hearing something as extraordinary as everything Kristoff is admitting on camera, as well as Truman escaping prison to come in contact with the world for the first time, The Truman Show suggests that more than likely history will repeat itself as viewers become attached to one program for a time and then move on. This cycle of obsolescence reduces even the most amazing and fascinating of human accomplishments into something mundane and banal. Christoph bragged about the achievement that The Truman Show was, and yet the moment it was over, viewers tuned out. The Truman Show's final line does an excellent job of distilling the issues that surround trying to capture lightning in a bottle with a gimmick. It ensures attention for as long as it proves fascinating. But the second, it's no longer a novelty. Consumers are ready to move on to the next big thing. The same remains true with the never-ending barrage of new content being released by streaming platforms, with each one endeavoring to find its version of The Truman Show and getting strong viewing numbers for 30 years until the cycle repeats itself. The Truman Show brims with philosophical and sociological themes, leaving audiences curious about the true meaning of its storyline hence, Here's a breakdown of its multi-layered plot. Starring Jim Carrey as the titular Truman Burbank, The Truman Show portrays how the main character grows up believing that he is an ordinary man, but, unbeknownst to him, his life has always been a reality TV series, where everyone around him is a mere actor. The island he lives on is a giant television filming set that is visible from outer space and nearly every second of his life is broadcasted live to millions of viewers in the outside world. Although Truman does not even distantly believe that the world around him is a mere simulation, perfectly orchestrated for a television series, he starts noticing strange inconsistencies and unlikely synchronicities around him that make him suspicious. With this, the deeper he delves into his quest to find answers, the more he understands the true nature of his fake reality. The Truman Show allows viewers to step inside Truman's boots and find the answers and true meaning of his world as he gradually removes the tapestry of the lies he is being fed. Here's an explanation of everything The Truman Show reveals and alludes to in its runtime. In its opening arc, The Truman Show establishes how the titular character's reality is fabricated by a media corporation, governed by a single writer, Christoph. Everything from his childhood fears to his day-to-day -day interactions is carefully manufactured by the people behind the central show's production. Time and again, even the actors around Truman force unsubtle product placements into his narrative, further enhancing the artificial nature of Truman's reality. Even the weather is controlled, highlighting how just for entertainment and profits, the media corporation behind the show shapes, constructs, and sells an alternate reality. By manipulating Truman's perception through an entire world built on lies and deception, the media corporation behind the show keeps him oblivious that he is living in a simulated reality. 
The creators of the titular show and the Truman Show also place subliminal visual cues all around Truman to ensure that he conforms to their scripts without believing that he does not have free will. By portraying this depiction of how a media outlet can blur the lines between reality and fiction through careful manipulation, the Truman Show highlights how media in the real world can often influence public perception to a degree where they start accepting reality without ever noticing how it is being forged with lies. In the Jim Carrey movie's second arc, Truman starts seeing cracks in the fabric of lies surrounding him. At first, he notices a light fall out of the sky, but chooses to ignore it because the notion of being the main character of a TV show seems so novel and far-fetched that it does not even cross his mind. However, the more Truman notices these glitches in the matrix of his reality, the more he turns skeptical about its nature. When he finally sees strange synchronicities and loops in his surroundings, he realizes there is more to his world than meets the eye. This marks the inception of his struggle for personal freedom. In a reality where everything is governed by determinism, Truman sets out to seek free will. Unfortunately, this pursuit soon makes him realize that his journey toward personal freedom will be marred with several obstacles. For instance, when he tries leaving town, the show's creators set up stoppages that prevent him from leaving the show's massive set. Even when he reaches the brink of finding answers to what is happening around him, they play with his emotions by reinstating his fake father into his narrative. People like Truman's best friend, Marlon, who he confides in, also blatantly lie to him by emotionally manipulating him into not leaving for Fiji. Like every human, Truman seems to have an innate desire to transcend the predetermined paths of his scripted narrative. However, just like external forces such as culture, society, and personal obstacles prevent an individual from finding personal autonomy, Truman struggles to overcome the sense of attachment he feels to his fake reality despite knowing how it is holding him back from achieving freedom. He feels bound by the fake fears, insecurities, and traumas the show's creators instilled in him all his life. Sea Haven, Truman's hometown in The Truman Show, represents the metaphorical cave in Plato's cave allegory. The allegory imagines a hypothetical cave where a group of people has been chained to a wall, restricting them from seeing the outside world. All they can see is a blank wall opposite the cave's opening. Owing to this, their sense of reality revolves around the shadows from the outside world cast on the blank wall they face. Like shadows from the outside world manipulate and limit the perception of the people inside the cave, the predetermined scripts created by the Truman Show's writers control the thoughts and actions of people inside Sea Haven. The actors surrounding Truman may be aware of the show's true nature. However, as seen in the Truman Show's opening testimonials, they, too, buy into its forced reality. They may believe that the awareness of the show's nature sets them free. But what more are they than mere lines written on a script? In Plato's allegory, one person from the cave later steps out and sees the world for what it is. When he returns and tries convincing his fellow humans to leave with him, they refuse to follow his lead because they are so used to seeing the projections of reality that they do not want to experience it firsthand. When Truman starts noticing the cracks in Sea Haven's reality, he, too, tries to tread the same path as the individual who left the cave in Plato's fable. However, just like the cave people were too comfortable seeing the shadows and afraid to experience the outside world's reality, the actors around Truman were too consumed with their fame to notice everything morally and ethically wrong with Sea Haven. They were blinded by the fact that like Truman, they, too, were mere puppets of the media cabals above them. The Truman Show was truly ahead of its time with its depiction of the exploitative nature of media. While its focus was primarily on reality TV, its themes have become all the more relevant with the prevalence of social media. Like Sea Haven created a fake alternate reality, where Truman was the main character of his narrative, social media can often make users believe they are the stars of their own TV show if not used carefully. The Truman Show was also meta and self-critical for its time, because, like many media outlets, it intentionally desensitizes viewers to the seriousness of its subjects by using comedy as a narrative device. 
In many ways, it also foresaw the rise of morally questionable reality shows and the prevalence of surveillance systems and user data collection. Even the movie's ending is cleverly multi-layered because it is a tragedy in disguise. While Truman literally and metaphorically breaks Sea Haven's walls and steps outside into the real world in the Truman Show's ending, it is hard not to wonder if he will ever be able to trust anyone after what he went through. Since the world obsessively watched him for many years on television, he will probably never break the prism of his celebrityhood and exploitative media fandom to find the freedom he seeks after The Truman Show. Across his over 30-year career, Jim Carrey has done very few film sequels and has even made it a rule to avoid them, with The Truman Show being a perfect example of why his rule exists. Carrey is best known for his comedic work, having started out in television on In Living Color, a sketch comedy series that also helped launch the careers of Jennifer Lopez, Jamie Foxx, David Allen Greer, and more. Carey solidified his status as a comedy movie star in 1994 with Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, which led to him starring in the more dramatic classic and arguably his best work, 1998's The Truman Show. The Truman Show stars Carey as Truman Burbank, an ordinary man who unknowingly grew up as the star of a reality television show in the artificial world of Sea Heaven Island. Where Truman thinks he's just living an ordinary life, the show's creator, Christoph Ed Harris, created an elaborate set filled with actors, which allowed him to have almost full control of his star. There are plenty of comedic elements to Carrie's performance as Truman, but it's his dramatic work and the Truman Show's ending that truly make it a highlight of his long, storied career. There has never been the Truman 2 or a sequel of any kind, and if there had been, it more than likely would have ruined the greatest 10 minutes in all of Carey's celebrated filmography. Today, sequels, spin-offs, and franchises are perhaps more popular than they ever have been, regardless of whether it diminishes their quality. When a film becomes a success, a typical immediate reaction is that there should be a sequel. But Carey has made it a point to avoid this, not even appealing in sequels of some of his biggest films. This rule has done wonders for the legacy of Carey and The Truman Show. The ending of The Truman Show sees Truman finally learning the truth about the television show and making the decision to leave Sea Heaven Island against the wishes of Kristoff. It's an extremely powerful and emotional moment in both The Truman Show and Carey's career as an actor. Despite not receiving an Academy Award nomination for his brilliant performance, Carey won a Golden Globe for The Truman Show, likely clinched through the amazing final scene. If there had been a sequel, it would have ruined the film's perfect ending, and it would have been nearly impossible to live up to the lauded original. There is very little dialogue from Carey in The Truman Show's ending. Yet, with just his facial expressions, body language, and a few lines, Carey perfectly encapsulates Truman's reaction and the decision he makes internally to leave the show and the life he's known behind. There's great suspense as he stands in front of the door, his back to the camera, before he finally says his catchphrase, In case I don't see ya, good afternoon, good evening, and good night bows, and leaves. This now famous line is first endearingly and jokingly delivered by Truman at the beginning of the Truman Show to his neighbors, as he did daily, unaware of the large audience watching. He says at the end of the Truman Show, it's the first time he's knowingly performing for the camera. All at once, it's a brilliant acknowledgement of and a sign-off to the audience as well as a farewell to the Truman everyone once knew as he decides to start a new, real life for himself. This final moment is uplifted by Carey's physicality and tone, which has always been one of his greatest strengths as an actor.